In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can go from an editor to a set designer with the help of AI generative fill. If you're ready, let's jump on in. So will creating fake AI sets be a thing of the future for editors or is it just a fad right now? Will it be more time consuming to do than just creating practical sets for your videos? To get to that answer, I tested it out myself. So to test it out, you'll see that I'm using a clip here in my timeline of me not in my normal set because I really wanted to see how much I could generate with AI to build a set from scratch. To create a fake set, we only need one frame from this video. So let's grab one where I cover the least amount of the background. This one is good. So let's press the camera icon in the program window to save this frame to a still image. So let's bring the photo into Photoshop. And it's important to note that currently generative fill only works in the Photoshop beta. And if you don't know what this is, you can check out this video that I made that goes into more detail after you finish this one. Here in Photoshop, let's expand our canvas with the crop tool. Let's press C. Next, hold Option or Alt and drag out the corners. With a bigger space here, we can now start extending our set. We can use the Marquee tool to select parts we want AI to fill in. Then click Generative Fill. And let's leave it blank for now and see the results. Great, now do it for all sides of the room. And it's better to do this in chunks rather than trying to do the whole room at once or else you're gonna get results like this. So let's merge everything and now we can start doing some fun set design. If you like the video so far, drop a robot emoji down in the comments so I know that you do. I got a few tips for you to get more realistic results. The first tip is lighting. So if we look at this image here, you can see that there's some light hitting me on the face right here. But where is it coming from? When I filmed this, I actually put the light off frame so the viewer couldn't see it. But what if we want to add a light back into frame that looks a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. So what we can do here is use the marquee tool again to select a blank spot on the right and let's add a studio lighting right back here. The next tip is to be patient. You will definitely need a few tries before you get the results that you want. What's really great is every time that you regenerate, even with a new prompt, Photoshop will save all the results up here in the properties panel so you can jump around between results to try them all out. And one thing that AI really struggles with is text and lettering. As you can see here from the Gael neon sign, I was obviously trying to write gal, but if you see the results, it's pretty rough. Or maybe it's time to change the channel name. What's up? It's Premier Gael here. Absolutely terrible. So I've got all of the fake props generated in the background, but you can see some work needs to be done so it can better fit the scene. Which leads me to my third tip, which is blend your elements. For example, this picture stands out like a sore thumb, mainly because it's in focus while everything else is blurry. And also the lighting is just wrong. If you look at just this layer, the AI also generated the background. So before we can mess with this picture, we have to separate it from the background. I'll grab the quick selection tool and mask out the picture and press command or control J to get a separated layer of just the picture. Now we can use curves to bring down the highlights and bring up the shadows so it fits my scene better. And we're not done yet. Don't forget the first tip. Since there's a light next to our picture, let's paint in some fake glare and change the blending mode to hard light. Same for the neon sign. It's supposed to be emitting light. I'll create a new layer and paint where the light should be affecting. And let's leave this like this for now because I'm going to be exporting this layer separately for some more saucin inside of Premiere Pro. You know, being able to customize a room is fun and all, but what about customizing music? For this, let me introduce you to today's sponsor, Track Club. Track Club is a great collection of super high quality music tracks that are all customizable. What that means is that if you find a song that you like, you can use Mixlab feature to change the speed of the song and mess with every instrument and vocal. From adjusting the volume to muting tracks that you don't like, you can get the perfect song for your project very easily. What I like about Track Club is they don't have a bloated catalog, and that means that you don't have to go through a bunch of okay songs to find those fire tracks. Track Club really focuses on just the fire ones. They are also a music licensing company that prioritizes investing money back into community organizations to help the world be a better place. If that isn't good enough, Track Club is also giving away business plans 
giant subscriptions to three lucky Premier Gal subscribers. All you need to do to enter the giveaway is to leave a funny editor comment just down below and fill out the form in the description box. If you want to try out Track Club for yourself, you can use my link below to get two months free so you can gain access to search and customize as much music to your heart's content. Thanks so much to Track Club for sponsoring today's video and now let's get back into the fake AI set design. Now that the background is done, it's time to focus on the foreground. Since the bottom portion of this shot is just me, using AI to extend my body might not be the best idea. <laughs> So let's add a table instead. Let's select the bottom portion of the shot and generative fill, give me a table. After many tries, Photoshop kept trying to give my table arms. So I gotta mask just the table and move it up so we don't get any weird AI hands. But the table's looking pretty empty. How about a coffee mug? But there is one problem here. If I move my hands, you should be able to see them behind the mug. But just like earlier, generative fill created the background too. So we just gotta get rid of that. I think this is enough and way better than the original. So now let's jump into Premiere Pro to add some more elements to make it feel more alive. Back inside of Premiere Pro, I've imported three parts of our fake set. One for background, foreground, and one for just the neon lights. Let's place them all with the original footage and nest everything. In our nest, go up to sequence settings and make this sequence bigger to fit our newly extended set. Now we just have to line up all the assets to the original video. For the background asset, let's mask out the area where I am so we can get the living, breathing version of me through. Let's hit play. And there you go. Although there are still a few more things we need to fix, let's tackle the hardest one first, which is that my hands aren't in front of the guitar. Now, obviously I could have made my life a lot easier by not placing an object directly behind me where I'm moving, but I wanted to show you how to live life the hard way. Cause guess what? It's masking time. We got a mask frame by frame. Just kidding. This video is about AI. Let's use Runway AI's Remove Background tool to do the mask for me. Here I've exported just the part where I'm covering up the guitar and plop it into Runway. Click on the area that I want to mask and let AI do its thing. That's it, we're done. Isn't that fast? For anyone that's also paying for an Adobe Creative Cloud subscription, you can also use After Effects Roto Brush to do this. It is a bit slower, but you can avoid having to pay for another tool. Back in Premiere, I got the footage from Runway. Let's add it to our timeline above the background layer, cut out the green screen with Alter key, and boom, the guitar is behind me as if it's actually there. Now that the hard part is done, now it's time for some finishing touches. First, the neon light. I'm going to change the blending mode to vivid light and let's lower the opacity by a lot. To make this less static, I'm going to keyframe the opacity and have it go up and down every few frames. This needs to be very subtle. You don't want big jumps cause it could get distracting real quick. I think that's enough keyframes. Let's just copy and paste them throughout the whole video and sick. Now let's jump over to the mug. I've got some smoke stock footage to make the mug look like it's got some hot coffee in there. Let's place the smoke on top of the mug and draw a mask around the mug to make it look like it's coming out from inside. I'm going to nest the smoke, change the blend mode to screen, and now we can create another mask on the nest with a lot more feathering to smoothen out the top of the smoke. So now that we created our own vibe using AI for the set, we can also further add to our vibe by adding customized music from Track Club. So now it is time to answer the question, is this actually useful? If you have objects behind you and you have to rotoscope minutes and minutes and hours potentially, is it worth it? Right now, rotoscoping does take a long time, especially on longer clips. Normally when I'm rotoscoping, I just rotoscope a few seconds at a time. But imagine doing minutes and minutes of that just to have your set work. Maybe now is not the time. But if you have the same set, the same angle, and you put the same image behind you and nothing interferes with your hand movements, then it could be a great way to further add to your set design. Also, generative fill is not just good at adding things. Let's say you need to remove something from your scene. You can just lasso that object and remove it as well. Or you can add something else to spruce up your design. It doesn't have to be a full makeover. It can just be simply adding something extra. But realistically, 
On the other end, having to do this for every single shoot can be time consuming for an editor. And especially when we have tight deadlines, the last thing we need is less sleep. So what do you think? Do you think generative fill will be used now to create sets, especially for YouTubers? Or do you think it's just a fad that will fade away? For now, only our imagination can decide. And as always, keep creating better video with Gal. See you next time. Bye. Mm-hmm.